And today we're going to discuss something out of your nightmares. So I guess technically this should have been the Halloween episode. But I just couldn't wait and decided to make this video today because it's a super exciting and somewhat strange discovery. A wonderful person, this is Anton. Today we're going to discuss a study about a somewhat unusual parasite. A single cell amoeba that's able to destroy our cells one by one and then cover itself with leftovers from other cells in order to pretend that it's one of our own cells or in order to mimic that it's a human cell so that the immune system doesn't really do anything. And it seems to do this in a very strange way by literally taking chunks out of human cells one by one. It doesn't even eat the whole cell, it just basically bites them, collects the external membrane, dresses itself up and then moves around the body doing this over and over and over again. And though it might sound like something very unusual and something that might not really affect anyone ever, surprisingly, this is also one of the deadliest parasites out there. And so let's discuss Entamoeba histolytica, the main cause for what's known as amoebiasis. Basically an infection that affects the entire body and that seems to be entirely caused by these very specific amoeba. And it just so happens that nearly 70,000 people per year seem to die from this. So this is actually something that's relatively common, especially in the developing world. But fun fact, also common in Texas and in Florida. And so here I guess let's first discuss this amoeba and then talk about what exactly it does inside human body. First of all, a quick clarification. This is not a bacterium. Just like so many other amoeba out there, this is a single cell eukaryotic organism known for their ability to move around using what's known as pseudopods or basically these protrusions resembling limbs and for their ability to absorb stuff such as in this case bacteria, usually swallowing them whole. And though the vast majority of them are actually pretty safe to us, some are known to produce dysentery, inflammation of intestines that usually causes diarrhea and sometimes can be fatal as well. But when it comes to parasitic amoeba, this one is probably one of the most unique and one of the most unusual. And amoeba histolytica has actually been known for a pretty long time, but nobody ever knew exactly how it's able to infect human cells. As a matter of fact, for some reason, it seems to only affect humans. And in many cases, it was discovered that they seem to always contain a lot of human cells inside. They love to ingest red blood cells, for example. And while in a typical environment, and amoeba histolytica enter human body through some kind of a contamination, usually food or water. So basically poorly washed vegetables or water that has not been boiled enough. But in most cases, people don't really get a lot of symptoms. Sometimes a person can get diarrhea, but that's really about it. But in rare cases, and amoeba histolytica can enter bloodstream and then can enter a lot of different organs. And here their preference seems to be liver. And they basically get there through blood. Here's actually an example of this amoeba that was detected in someone's blood. And it's really inside the liver that they usually cause the most damage, which does produce at least 50 to 70,000 fatalities every single year. And so for many, many decades now, in order to create therapies or vaccines, scientists were actually trying to figure out exactly how Entamoeba histolica does its thing. How exactly is it able to enter blood? And how exactly is it able to damage so many tissues? Or I guess more importantly, why is it that in most cases, we don't actually get any symptoms and the immune system seems to basically not activate? How can such a tiny bean create so much damage? And well, at least one researcher spent nearly 15 years trying to study this. Catherine Ralston and the team you see right here initially started studying this bacterium back in 2011, with the new study potentially explaining most of the techniques. Now at first, researchers believe that maybe this amoeba is using some kind of a poison. Or in essence, it injects poison in some of the cells, causing collateral damage and then entering additional organs. But that's not what the actual observations seem to reveal, because first of all, there was no poison of any kind and second of all, that's not what the amoeba were doing. One of the first discoveries here was that these amoeba for some reason actually contain human cells on top of them with a lot of nearby cells being damaged and not entirely absorbed and not consumed at all. And well, eventually when researchers put this amoeba next to various human cells, they realized what's happening. This amoeba was just taking bites. Although technically I guess not bites because it doesn't really have teeth. It was essentially absorbing chunks of bacteria using a kind of a limited 
phagocytosis, but it would not absorb the entire cell and would just consume a piece of it. But it was really the cell membrane that this amoeba was trying to consume, and it would do this over and over and over again, eventually collecting a tremendous number of different cell membranes that would then display on its surface. And though to us humans this might seem like some kind of a trophy hunting, this was obviously not what it was doing. Here this was actually similar to these really creepy pictures of assassin bugs. For example, Acanthaspis pitax displays various ant corpses on its back as a form of camouflage. This is a strategy it uses to hide from predators, but also helps this bug to capture even more prey and more ants. And so in this case, the scent of ants actually masks this bug, providing a kind of an olfactory but also visual camouflage. And that's kind of what this amoeba does as well. By covering itself with pieces of membrane from a lot of human cells, it was able to camouflage from a lot of human immune system defenses, and also made itself look like a typical human cell, which prevented the immune system from attacking it, but also allowed it to blend in with other cells, thus consuming them with ease. And interestingly, this particular amoeba seems to be able to destroy any human cell. It's even able to destroy white blood cells, which don't attack it at all. Normally, white blood cells are the ones destroying intruders and are the ones doing this biting and swallowing. But that's not really the case for this amoeba. And so in this recent study, scientists definitively showed that by doing this, this amoeba is able to gather a lot of different proteins from various human cells, which it surprisingly then arranges on its own surface in order to produce an almost exact mimic. So it literally starts to look like a human cell in terms of chemical structure and in terms of proteins on the surface. Which is why our body cannot detect it at all. And surprisingly, this technique doesn't just protect it from human immune system, it also works on other species. And so in this case, when this particular amoeba destroys various cells, which actually does have a name, it's known as trogocytosis, it creates an unusual molecular disguise that seems to work in a lot of additional species such as, for example, mice. And here researchers were definitely able to detect certain human proteins, such as CD46 and CD55, that are usually displayed by our cells in order not to be attacked by the immune system. In some sense, you can basically think of it as a kind of an identity card. But when they took these amoeba and then placed them inside the blood serum from various mice, the immune system inside mice blood was not able to react either. Which is actually really strange because mice are not a natural host for this amoeba. But they do have a somewhat similar immune response to humans, so the camouflage produced by this amoeba seems to be super effective. And this also obviously highlights the similarity between human and rodent immune response. And so obviously because this also seems to affect mice very similarly, it means that now researchers can finally create various experiments using mice and not just human cells in order to finally figure out how to fight these unusual amoeba. Because the current treatment is sort of limited, and no vaccines or any specific medicines exist yet in order to stop the infection from these somewhat strange parasites. And since Entamoeba hysterica infects approximately 50 million people worldwide every single year, resulting in at least 70,000 fatalities, trying to figure out how to prevent the infection here is actually something that's kind of important. But one question that's not answered here is, why exactly does it only affect humans and primates? How did this parasite become so specific in its target? Right now there is no direct answer, but the fact that this amoeba became so effective at infecting us is somewhat unnerving. I mean, it's probably something that started millions of years ago with some of our hominid ancestors, but it's obviously still something going on today and something that's just as dangerous as before. But until we discover something else about this amoeba, that's pretty much it. Check out some of the previous videos on parasites and microbes in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon, which by the way now includes a lot of additional videos and previously unseen videos, and of course absolutely no ads, or support this channel by joining the channel membership, which allows you to watch some of the videos in advance. Or maybe consider buying the t-shirt in the description, which obviously helps me quite a lot. On that note, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.